A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet Williams steam locomotive, part 71. Silver soldering the central water junction to the piping from the saddle tank and fitting the inlet connection to the blower. Then silver soldering the unions onto the pipe. This gunmetal block sits at the lowest part of the water piping and I need to silver solder it to the piping which in turn fastens to the tank. The unions that will be fitted to this block will supply the water to the axle pumps and the hand pump. It will also carry a water tap to allow complete draining of the water tank. Originally when I fitted this together loosely onto the tank itself I used a felt tip marker pen to mark the positions where the pipe goes. I need this pipe to be exactly in this position when I silver solder it but I can't really silver solder it if it's covered in black marker pen ink. So by using a combination of my scriber and a flat needle file, I made some solid marks into the metal and this will indicate the position that the pipes need to be in before I silver solder the unit. You will notice that the area where I'm going to silver solder is extremely clean. Here is the pipe junction in the outer part of my workshop on the brazing hearth, ready for silver soldering. All I need now is some heat, and plenty of it as this part is quite large. I changed the blowtorch head for the next size up. This clip is running at a higher speed than normal just to get through it, because it took a while before the part reached the correct temperature to melt the silver solder. The general rule is, when the flux takes on a watery appearance, that is the time to apply the silver solder. And as per usual, I'm applying too much. It's just a very bad habit that I have, but at least my silver solder joints are very strong, and they do not leak. It's time now to let the part cool to black before I quench it. This took a while, and the video is running at a higher speed here too. Even though the part has cooled to black, it's still very hot. I'm holding it with a pair of pliers, and now I'm putting it into the acid bath. My acid bath is in a much darker area of my workshop. And talking about dark areas of my workshop, this is pretty grim too. It's inside the smoke box. There's a hole in the side which lets some light in. This engine is very big and I can't move it around to be in the right position for the lights and the images look terrible when I use an LED torch. This is the union that's going to pass through the hole in the smoke box and connect to another part at the other side. I don't want any air leaks where this part goes through the smoke box. I coated the thread with Loctite 542 before I put it in the hole and then again once it was in the hole. This is a 1 8 BSP elbow which fits perfectly onto the union and I'm putting a nut on the end of this to stop the thread from getting damaged. Eventually a pipe of 3 16 of an inch diameter will connect from the valve on the turret to this elbow on the outside of the smoke box and on the inside of the smoke box is a union with a piece of pipe that points up the chimney. This is the blower, more about that later. Before going any further, I need to make sure that this elbow is tight, so I'm using a barco spanner on the outside, and I'm using another one on the inside of the union, so it really is tight, it's not going anywhere. You can't really see what I'm doing at the moment, because even if there was enough light, my hand is still going to be in the way. I've fitted the pipe that points up the chimney to the union that sticks through the side of the smoke box. That's it, the blower's ready to be piped to the valve on the turret. But I can't do that just yet until the cab and the tank are in place. After 24 hours in my acid bath, which is only Kilrock K kettle descaler, this is what the pipe looks like. And I'm very pleased to announce that when I tried the pipe in position on the fittings into the tank, it is perfect. I remember when I was making this pipe, one viewer commented that the pipe wasn't level and the fittings weren't in the right place. I can say with confidence that the fittings are in exactly the right place. And I can also say with confidence that I do believe that this viewer was depriving some poor village of its idiot. At the moment the pipe is just pushed into the union cones, but I need to silver solder one at each end of the piece of pipe. You will notice that I've definitely made sure that I fit the union nuts first. 
As before, I'm coating the part with Easy Flow number 2 flux. I'm making sure there are no gaps in the coating, and then I push these special fittings in place onto the pipe. Unlike some union fittings, these are not coned, they're flat for ease of removal. My usual method when silver soldering is to preheat the pipe first, which evaporates the water from the flux around the joint. I'm using my normal blowtorch head for this job because it isn't a very big piece of metal. One down, one to go. It is exactly the same procedure at the other end. I preheat the pipe, that evaporates the water so that blasting it with the blowtorch doesn't blow all the flux away. And in this clip, as this is a tutorial, I'm applying the silver solder slightly early. But no matter, as soon as this flux takes on the watery appearance, the silver solder flashes around the joint. Even though I have made quite a few silver soldering tutorials, I still get people asking me questions and saying, well, I tried it and it didn't work. My answer to these people is always the same. Please watch a few more of my silver soldering tutorials. This bit's easy. I'm cleaning up the piece of copper pipe using, first of all, some Scotch-Brite and then some Brasso wadding. Now I'm securing the pipe to the tank. The silver soldered joints are all strong. The only problem is the copper is annealed, so it's fairly soft at the moment. Here, as usual, using a barco spanner, I'm making sure that the square block is actually square to the piping. It's actually much easier to clean this piping when it's in place, so here I'm using a cloth which gives it a nice shine. A bit of useless information, this cloth is actually curtain lining. It's really good for workshop cloths. The final part of the job is to make sure that everything is sitting squarely in the position I want it to be. I try it by eye, first of all using a 12 inch ruler in both directions and it looks pretty square to me. My friend Andrew buys a lot of gadgets and he had one of these and I thought well this will be useful. So I bought one and it's called a level box. The clue is in the name, it's for finding levels and the level of the bench is different to the level of the part. It's near enough for rock and roll though, it's not that far out. And the reason for this is because the tank itself leans slightly as it sits on the bench. That is it for the first episode of 2024. I'd like to wish all my viewers once again a very happy new year. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.